Now, optical isomers are important for organic chemistry, and uh, I'll give you one more example for organic chemistry, and this is probably the simplest example you can do. Uh, well, yes, <laughs> although it doesn't work simple. So this is going to be, especially in the sponsor that I've chosen, uh, we've got C, D, R, C, L, F, I. That's the compound that we're looking at. And the simplest way to make anything chiral, which will mean it has optical isomers, is going to be to take a carbon and attach four different things to it. And uh, so if you do that, and uh, we draw the shapes of these, and here's my mirror. So I'm going to put carbon in the middle. I'm going to draw uh, my favorite way of drawing tetrahedral. And I'm going to do it on the other side as well, except non-superimposable. Well, it's a mirror image anyway, but it'll turn out to be non-superimposable. I'm not used to drawing it this way, so it takes me a minute. Yes, close enough. Now what you put is, you put uh, I, I, CL, CL, CR, CR. Okay, so now these are going to be non-superimposable mirror images. One of these is going to be the L and the other one's the D. And uh, they also have naming conventions for these as well. Um, but we won't get into that now. All you have to know for now is two things. One is if you draw, uh, if you want chiral molecules, take any carbon and look for four different things attached to it. Check your amino acids to see that that is true. Then uh, they are chiral. They are optical isomers of each other. They and one of them is L and D, and we'll save that for uh, determining that for when you get to organic chemistry.